All right, let's cut to the chase. I'm trying to make 3D in Scratch, sort of, give or take. Um, so the first step in that, I figured, was making a triangle. And I've already kind of got that working, so I'll just go right now. I've got these three vertices that I can drag around. And it's, yep, okay, it's still working, just lagging a little bit for some reason. And it looks like it just makes the triangle no matter what, with no problems. But that's not true. There are problems, of course. Um, you can see that if this vertex goes below this one, it breaks. And also, that is the case if it goes above this vertex. And I figure that should be pretty simple to fix. Just uh, swap around the logic based on the relative positionings of these vertices. Of course, inversion vertically still works, so that's good, and it makes sense why it works, at least based on the algorithm that I designed to draw it. And if I go over there, I'm not going to run through all the code, I'll just explain the general process. I'm using the pen extension, and I start at this bottom left vertex, and what I do is I draw a line from basically this line to this line, if we're below this vertex, and then from this line to this line, if we're above this vertex. You know, pretty simple. Um, I was hoping that maybe I could stretch and skew like a triangular sprite, maybe, but I didn't see anything like that anywhere in Scratch, and I looked it up. Seems like it's not a thing, so I'm just going to use the pen extension. Um, so, yeah, the next thing I'm going to try is adding in that new logic for those different types of triangles, and I will get back to you once that's working. Alright, so far so good. I went ahead and made a triangle type variable that stores what type of triangle it is. And that is, you know, what type of logic it will have to use based on the configuration of the vertices. Now the configuration that I already have support for, that I made before I started recording, I've decided is triangle type 0. Now triangle type 1 is when this green vertex right here is above the other two. And I forgot to hit play. So this is triangle type 1, as you can see it's not working yet, and then there's triangle type 2, which is when the green vertex is below these other two. So now that I have it correctly identifying the type, I can then move on to using that variable to select which logic to use, but I have to actually make that logic first, so that's next. Alright, so I now have triangle type 2 rendering along with triangle type 0. And I was working through it and I figured out the solution was basically to swap the identities or roles of the red and green vertices once the green one goes below the red one. So basically that means, you know, this is the way the red one is acting and this is the way the green one is acting in order to create the blue one. Well, actually, uh... This is the way they are acting. So if I swap the roles of the green and red one when the green one goes below the red one, it ends up still working. And that makes sense because this one right here, this orientation, is basically the same as this one, if you notice. But this one, it considers as triangle type 0. So that's what I mean by swapping the roles. Hopefully that made sense. Anyway, now it's time to move on to triangle type 1, which still does not work. Alright, I got that working. And this basically involved swapping the roles of the green and blue vertices. And just to confirm, I can actually physically swap them, and it should be triangle type 0. Alright, that's correct. So, you may think, well, this looks like all the different configurations. But, it's not. Exactly. For instance, if I move this blue vertex over here, it's broken again. And you may think, well, didn't I already cover this orientation? But obviously not. And I'm not entirely sure about the specifics of what's going wrong, but there is one thing that I do know. When I set up these vertices, I set it up to where red meant the lowest, green meant the next lowest, and blue meant the highest. And so these different triangle types are for, I guess, permutations, you could say, of this kind of layout. So if I go ahead and rotate every vertex, you know, to the next place, so 
move red to where green was, green to where blue was, and blue to where red was. Yeah, you can see there's a problem now. Even though that's effectively the same thing, it's not working. And it's got to be because of some flaw in how I'm doing this. I think I need to order the vertices. So in this case, you know, if I were to keep the color scheme, this one should be the red one, this one should be the green one, and this one should be the blue one. Um, I'm not entirely sure how to go about that, or if that's even the right direction to take this, but I'll try and figure something out, and we'll get back to you once something's working. Alright, this one had me stumped, so I did a little digging, and I came up with this little graph. I think this is all the different possibilities you could have, I'm not sure. But at least from this alone, one thing I noticed is that the configurations that always work have the vertices running counterclockwise, where, you know, red, green, and blue are the actual order of the vertices. Um, two of the counterclockwise ones do work, it's just that they don't have the configuration number that you would expect. And I guess that makes sense. And the remaining clockwise orientations just completely fail to draw properly. And so I think the idea is to not draw triangles that are that have a vertex order of clockwise. And if I remember from my time meddling around with computer graphics and stuff like that, um, triangles that are counterclockwise are facing the camera, and ones that are clockwise are facing away, so you wouldn't draw them anyway. And I guess that makes sense, and so I guess it would be fine to discard drawing clockwise triangles since they wouldn't even be visible anyway. So that leaves me with the problem of how do I figure out, based on the positions of vertices and the known order, whether they run clockwise or counterclockwise. I'm going to look into that. Alright, change of plans. Winding order did not help at all. I realized that this diagram was in fact incomplete, and I found, actually, a counterclockwise, which is what orange means, orientation or configuration that does not even draw properly. Two of them, actually. Um, so now I think this is the real full chart of all the different possible configurations. But the pattern I'm seeing is no pattern quite yet, because the original pattern I thought was that counterclockwise winding orders always drew perfectly, but obviously not. Also, why did I put a 2 there? That should be a question mark. Question mark means that the triangle type that it gave me didn't draw it properly. So I'm going to put a question mark just hinting that there could be some other triangle type that I could eventually calculate that would draw it properly. But for now, it's unknown. So now I have to go back to try and find a pattern. Um, I'll keep it, get back to you if that works. Alright, made a discovery. There are certain vertex orders that always draw properly and certain vertex orders that never draw properly. So, red, green, blue, like, okay, if these are ordered from uh, lowest to highest, red, green, blue always draw properly. Um, green, red, blue always draw properly. And red, blue, green always draw properly. Also, I think I messed up a color right here. So, this is a green, blue, red, which is not anywhere in here, but, so, it doesn't draw properly, which makes sense. Um, but this is a red, blue, green, which we have another red, blue, green over here that also draws properly. And what do you know? They have the exact same triangle type. So um, now that I figured that out, the thing I need to figure out is what what next. And I'm looking at these, and if we only ever want counterclockwise triangles to work, not only do we need red, green, blue and green, red, blue, and red, blue, green to work, we also need blue, red, green, and blue, green, red to work. So those are the, I guess, remaining two triangle types that need to work. So I'll look into trying to get that kind of logic sorted out. 
Okay, I think I'm on to something. I've got this mess of a graph, which shows that I need five different orderings to... Or there are five different orderings that I actually need to be able to support. And it's these ones. It looks like one of them is the same. And I haven't gotten to actually supporting drawing them, but I think I have gotten to supporting detecting them. So unfortunately, I cannot show you both screens at once. So I'm just going to show me going through each one to make sure it works. So we've got configuration zero, that's correct. So we now need to uh, move green up here. And it is not, okay, never mind. I, I think I've forgotten to do that every single time now. Okay, so now we've got configuration one, that's correct. So now we need to move green below. All right, that's configuration two. Okay, configuration three requires us to have green here and blue here. Okay, it is... Oh, no, no. And blue needs to go here and red needs to go here. Yes, that's configuration three. And if I move blue up above red, that should go back to configuration one. All right, it's not drawing properly, but that's because only configuration zero is drawing properly now. And the last one we have is red above both of them, which should be configuration four. If I can do that. There we go. It's detecting the configurations properly now. So now I have to get it to draw the configurations properly now. Let's see how that goes. All right, we have now graduated to this mess of a code block. So what I'm going to do is, again, go back through that diagram. And I'm going to go ahead and move the vertices before I start running. Don't worry, I didn't forget to hit play again. This was intentional this time. I promise. So hit go. All right, that's triangle type zero. It works pointing to the right and to the left. So next we need to move green above blue and red. That is triangle type one, right, left. Okay, now we have quad, or I, well, I was about to say quad type. I see that there and I'm like, why does it say quad? It's because the sprite's called quad. We now have triangle configuration two. That requires green to be below red and blue. All right, it says it's two. It's working both on the right. And the left, good. Now we have configuration three. That requires blue to stay where it is, and green can now go over here. And it says that is triangle type two for some reason, because I put them in the wrong places. Okay, there we go, triangle type three. It works on the right and on the left. Perfect, okay. Um, and just, just for the sake of, you know, covering all my bases. Here is the other form of configuration one. Yep, configuration one works on the right and the left. Beautiful. And then the last one, finally, configuration four should have right above green and blue. There, there it is, drawing perfectly on the right and the left. There we have it. So just because I'm curious, what would a, so this is counterclockwise, what would a clockwise triangle draw like um it seems to draw and it seems to think it's configuration four interesting um but that doesn't matter because we don't need to draw clockwise winding order triangles negative right if i can drag it i guess it's, the hitbox is so tiny it still says the winding is positive and that's because i didn't put the block back did i um no, I did not. Can I edit this while it's running? If I do that... I can! Okay, so red, green, blue, that's counterclockwise? Clockwise. Okay, clockwise is positive, it looks like. No, no, no. I am losing my mind again. Counterclockwise is positive. Those... No, that's clockwise. See, I'm losing my mind. Clockwise is positive. Those are the configurations we can discard because they're facing away from us anyway. And counterclockwise is negative, correct? Let's just try another counterclockwise orientation that I already have covered, which should be configuration one. It's positive. All right, and if I move this over here, it is negative. All right, so just to confirm, let's go... Okay, this is configuration zero. I meant to try configuration one. And now it's, wait, now it's negative. What? 
Okay, um, I think my calculation of winding order is wrong. It, it, it has to be wrong, right? Because if I move this down here, it's positive. But that's not true. Oh, I know why. It's because I did this after I went ahead and rearranged the order of the vertices to get them to draw properly. If I do this, that's positive, which means, oh, let's find out. This is counterclockwise, clockwise, all right. That's configuration zero, configuration one. Okay, that is counterclockwise, which is positive. This is clockwise, which is negative. Okay, okay, okay. False alarm. It's working. All right. Um, I'm wondering if perhaps I should just wrap it up. I think it's been this has been going for a while now. Let me check, and I'll I'll let you know. All right, that is definitely long enough. It's roughly 15 or 16 minutes now, longer than I expected. But then again, I kind of rambled a lot and kind of lost some time to losing my own mind. But we have a triangle drawing. And I say we because I could not have done it without Stack Overflow, obviously. Um, I figured, you know, Scratch would be something a little bit more my speed. I mean, Unity's fun and all, but I thought, eh, I'll try out Scratch. But anyway... In the next episode, I hope to maybe get some things done, like um, making this method right here be able to draw any triangle I want if I pass in the vertices instead of just these three handles right there. And maybe things like back face culling. That should be easy since I've already got the winding calculating correctly. And hopefully if I have time, something like perspective projection maybe and maybe just the basics of getting some mouse movement and waz movement uh, affecting the um, state of a camera, you know, that's got position, rotation, all that cool stuff. But yeah, that's for episode two. Uh, thanks for watching episode one. Stay tuned for episode two, which will probably come out tomorrow. I'll record it now, but I'll, I'll space them out. Um, thanks for watching, and bye.